right this is electrotechnics n6 uh, we are using the textbook by sa chatakun we are doing activity 1.3 and i'll be solving question three there if you have the book you can just turn to that and let me just quickly read the statement and try and solve the question it says a 250 volt DC shunt motor draws an armature current of 20 amperes from the supply when working at full load. The resistance of the armature and shunt field are 0 0.5 and 250 respectively. Calculate the resistance of a resistor connected in series to the shunt field in order to raise the speed of the motor from 600 revolutions per minute to 1000 revolutions per minute. Assume that the load torque remains constant and that the field coils are unsaturated. Right, so that's the assumption that we need to make. And they give us a hint that the problem ends up being a quadratic equation. So we'll see. Right. Okay, so if I'm looking at this, I'm having two scenarios. One, where the speed N1 is equal to 600 revolutions per minute like that right and then this situation changes now the speed has been changed to a new speed and two where it's now 1000 revolutions per minute now for them to be able to do that change they had to insert a resistor in series with the field right of this particular shunt setup so we need to calculate the value of this resistor here Let's call it Rx. We need to calculate the value of this resistor. So we'll go through the steps and see how we can come up with the answer. Right. So if we look at the given information, one, they told us that the torque remains unchanged. So that means that T1 is equal to T2, right? And also we are given that the armature current in condition one, IA1, is 20 amperes with a resistance of 0 0.5 and we're also given the field resistance rf1 is equal to 250 and the voltage is obviously 250 volts in both conditions so v, v in condition one is the same as v in condition two which is 250 volts like that we don't know the current, we don't know this current, we don't know this current. So this is all the information that is given to us. But there's two equations that we are going to be using throughout this. The first equation is this one. It states that E1 over E2 is equal to N1 multiplied by I field 1 divided by N2 multiplied by I field two so this is the first equation that we'll use and the second equation that we will use always when we deal with speed we work with these two equations then the second equation is is t1 over t2 right talk one over talk two is then equal to i a1 which is the armature current in condition one multiplied by i f1 which is the field current in condition one divided by i a2 armature current i a2 multiplied by the field current i f2 so we don't have these two values we don't have these two values Yes, we have this one because it's given to us and we can simply calculate IF1 from our knowledge of shunt connected machines. So let's go ahead and do that. We can easily calculate IF1, IF1, which is this current that flows through here, 
is equal to the su supply voltage V divided by RF1, which is equal to 250 over, we said this value is 250 also, it's given to us, right? So this makes the current to be actually equal to 1 amperes like that, okay? Let me just draw a line here so that I save my space, right? <clears throat> so that current IF1 is then equal to 1 amperes like that. Well, then we can also calculate, <clears throat> when I'm looking at these two e equations, excuse me, we can calculate E1 also. We know that E1 would be equal to V minus IA1 multiplied by RAC1, where RAC is the amateur circuit resistance. That's what that RAC stands for. So RAC1 we are given. So we can go ahead and substitute the values there. We say that this is 250 minus IA1 is given to us. It's 20 multiplied by 0 0.5. There, it's a given value. Take that. If you punch that in our calculator, uh, 250 minus 20 by 0 0.0, by 0 0.5, rather, that gives us 240 volts. So we do now have the value of E1. And if I'm looking at this equation here, I do have E1. I do have N1, I do have N2, I do have I field 1, I just calculated it there. So I have this and this, so I can go ahead and substitute those uh, values there. Let me do that. So I can say that 240 divided by E2, can you see there, right? Yes, you can see. 240 divided by E2 is equal to, I substitute N1 is given to me. As 600 multiplied by I field 1, I calculated it as 1, divided by N2, which is 1000, multiplied by an unknown value I F2, right? So if I see that I do have two unknowns and one equation and so it means I cannot go any further. I will leave this here and go to this other equation and see what is it that I can do. I've been told that T1 and T2 is equal to, I mean they are equal to each other. So this value and this value is basically one value. So if I do that substitution, that and that will cancel and this makes this one is equal to I A1 I F1 divided by I A2 I F2. If I then substitute this value I A1, it's given to me there. It's 20. I F1, I've just calculated it there. So I can substitute and say 1 is equal to 20 multiplied by 1 divided by I A2 multiplied by I F2. Now I'm here in the second condition and I don't have these values, right? So let me make at least a I A2 or rather I F2 to be the subject here. If I do that, I just take multiply this there and I have a new equation I F2 is then equal to 20 over I a2 and I named this equation number one. That's my first equation. Right? Now I can now continue. If I'm looking at this, I see that now I have another an equation with two unknowns. I have two, I don't know it. I a two, I also don't know it. So let me then take this and substitute it here in this equation, right? If I try and simplify this equation, let me just label it as also equation two. Now, if I do this, I come here, I say 
substitute equation one which is that into equation two which is this one here so if i do that i will have 240 divided by e2 is equal to 600 over 1000 multiplied by now i have two i substitute that new equation so i will have 20 over i a2 like that right so this is now substituted there and it's sorted so if i work around this you try and simplify this and that you will end up having something like this you'll have 240 divided by e2 is equal to do that multiplication there you can just punch this in, in on your calculator you will end up at 0. 0.03 IA2 but I'm still having a problem because I've got two unknowns again on this equation so but let me continue uh, if I then multiply this value on that side I end up with 240 is equal to 0. 0.03 IA2 E2 unknown value so I've run out of space here. I'm going to continue here. Here, right? Right. So let me just take this as it is 240 is equal to 0 0.03 IA2E2. Right. So I have this situation. But I do know that E2 can be calculated using this equation e2 is equal to v which is still that supply voltage minus i a2 multiplied by r a c2 i do have this value r a c2 i do have this value the voltage and i also do have a representation of i a2 but then let me just take this term as it is and substitute it there for E2, right? Take this term as it is and I substitute it there for E2. So and then I will have 240 is then equal to 0 0.03 IA2. And obviously I'm, sub I'm substituting these values V. I'm given there as 250 minus an unknown value of IA2 multiplied by RAC. It's there. 0. Point. Um, sorry, you can't see that. 0. 0.5. Right? This 0. 0.5 is basically coming from that value there. Okay. So... Then let me continue. Now, if you multiply this out, you can just work it out. You see that you will end up with a quadratic equation, obviously, because of this multiplied by that, it will give you IA2 squared. So that is basically a quadratic equation. So let's multiply out. Um, 240 is then equal to, if I multiply out, you will end up in this situation where you have 7. 0.5 IA2 minus 0 0.015 IA2 squared. Right? You see that we have that. Let's try to then make this thing to be a quadratic equation. So if I do that, take these guys this side and that, that side. So I will have I write it out here i a2 times 0 0.015 squared it's that value 
minus 7.5 ia2 plus took everything to this side 240 is equal to zero now i've got a quadratic equation with ia2 being my variable of interest so i have to solve that using the quadratic formula so let's turn to the next page and do that quadratic formula Thank you.